So today I'm going to tell you about one of the new features in Formula 1.1 uh, and that feature is parameterized class support. This is a feature that's been asked for a lot uh, over the last year or so and it relates to the feature in the Puppet language of um, using parameterized classes to properly scope your variables so that you don't have namespace conflicts and things like this. In order to use that from an ENC perspective you have to provide um, parameter data in the ENC output in the class section of the ENC um, and it's not difficult to get an ENC that does that, it's much more difficult to set up the user interface for that. So we've added this in Formula 1.1, you can play with it now in the nightlies or you can wait for the upcoming 1.1 release. Uh, and I'm going to show you how you can play with it, how you can use it, different ways of using it, different ways of restricting it. Um, so I'm going to start by telling you how to turn it on, uh, most usefully. So um, as the feature, parameterized classes as a feature of Puppet were only added in 2.6.5. So if you're using a puppet mass that's older than 2.6.5, you need to have this this section here, parameterized classes in ENC. That needs to be set to false, otherwise you'll break your puppet master. Um, so it's set to false at the moment, uh, and I have a test node here. So if we look at its ENC data, you can see that my classes section is an array, which is how it needs to be for older puppet masters. As soon as we set this to true, oops. There we go. As soon as we set this to true, if we refresh this page, you'll see this becomes a hash. And because it's a hash, we can now start adding more data to it. So we've turned it on. How do we start using it? Well, I'll show you the sort of admin interface to start with. So if we go to Puppet Classes, you'll need obviously some classes that are parameterized. It so happens that some of the Foreman installer modules are parameterized, so I'm going to use those. So I'm going to look here at the Foreman class itself. Um, and we've seen this before, uh, you can alter the name, you can assign it to host groups, we've got the smart variable tab which was the old way of doing something like parameterized classes. It was our kind of halfway house uh, to getting it done. Um, but here we have this new tab, smart class parameter. And um, down the left we have here all of this uh, useful information. So what's happened is when you import your classes, um, into Foreman, it reads the PP files and it will um, pass it and understand what variables are available to that class so that you can start um, assigning values to them. So it's, it's read our Foreman uh, PP uh, and it said, okay, so we've got all these variables and you can do things with them. So I'm going to run through a little example. I'm going to assume that I want to um, turn off Passenger and SSL. So let's say I'm setting up a development form and server and I don't need Passenger and SSL on, on that particular host. So here's my Passenger module and now we've got some useful information on the right. So at the top what we have here is, is a set of useful data, just information mainly. So we've got the name of the environments that this class exists in, we've got the name uh, of the variable that we're modifying. We've got this description field, we can put whatever we like in here um, and it's just for our use. So it's not passed onto Puppet, it's not used in any way, it's just so that you can write down somewhere um, what you set up and why you set it up in a certain way. Uh, from here on downwards you'll note we've got these useful pop-ups. These are handy things to tell you all about um, what's expected in each section. Um, that's uh, useful if you get stuck. The main one here then is Override. So Override tells uh, Puppet, uh, sorry, tells Foreman whether or not to um, ma manage this parameter. So without it set, if we just go and look at our ENC data, you'll see there's nothing assigned to the Foreman class. Puppet will just use the defaults. And if we don't tick override, nothing's going to happen. So I'm going to tick that, and then I'm just going to save it before we go any further. Okay, now if we refresh our ENC data, you'll see we've got our passenger variable now, but it's got this rather unhelpful string. So what's happened here is um, Foreman's gone and read the Foreman uh, init.pp, but init.pp inherits from params.pp, uh, and so all it's got is this Foreman params string. So it's not quite clever enough to sort of follow that through onto other classes, and it just takes the literal string that you've put into your pp file. So we need to alter that default. It's not very useful as it is. So we'll do that. 
So we also happen to know that this is a boolean, right? Use passenger is true or false. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the type to a boolean. And we're going to change the default value to false. Uh, I'm going to save that. And if I look at my ENC data now, hopefully, there we go, passenger changes to false. So now we've just configured all of the classes. Every machine that's using the foreman class will have passenger set to false. That's not very flexible. Um, what we'd really like to do is to uh, override it for certain types of hosts. And there's a couple of ways to do this. Um, the first one is to change it here in the in the puppet classes section of the foreman interface. And we do that using matches, which are down here. So let's take an example. I'm going to uh, show you how to do it for just a single host and also for a whole environment. But it's very flexible. You can use anything you like pretty much to match on. So we've got uh, a set of examples here at the bottom of the page. Um, we've got the fully qualified domain name, we've got the host group, the operating system, the domain, and you can add more to these if you check the tooltip. It's suggesting environment. Uh, I think you can also use parameters. You can certainly match on facts. Um, so you can say, you know, any host that has this fact should have passenger turned off. Um, things like that. So I'll do it for a single host first of all. So I'm just going to grab this host name out of the URL up here. There we go. Uh, I'm going to add a matcher. So I'm going to say fqdn equals my test host. And for this host, I want it to be true. Okay, so we've, we've got it set globally to false and true for this specific host. So if we refresh this now, we get true, which is what we wanted. That's not very flexible. So uh, it's still only a single machine. So let's make a slightly more useful statement. Let's say that all the machines in the production environment are going to have passenger set to true, and all other machines are going to have passenger set to false. So we're going to go down here and we're going to say the default is false, so that's fine. And then we're going to change this matcher. So we're going to add environment, there we go. And we're going to change this to environment equals production, and then it should be true. So if we come back here now, this should this is false. Why is this false? Well, we're in the master environment at the moment. So if we change our host and we put it in the production environment and we look at it, we should find now it says passenger is true, which is exactly what we wanted. Production hosts have passenger, development hosts don't. OK, so this is great. And we can do lots of useful things. And it should be clear that you can do much more complicated setups with the matches. You can have as many of these as you like. So you can you can use all of the, the various tools available to you to build up logic around how you want these things to work. So you could say, OK, production hosts act like this, but production hosts in this host group act a different way, and this specific host acts a different way again. Obviously. That's difficult to demonstrate with a boolean, which can only be true or false. But you can imagine um, something like the URL that Foreman speaks to could be different in many different places. So that's all fine, but it requires you to come to this Foreman uh, page, this Puppet Classes page, which is quite a powerful admin page. And it's not always true that you want your junior admins to be able to edit the classes directly in this way. So instead, um, you can also do this directly from a host. So I'm going to show you again, if we just re refresh where we're at. So we're saying this is false everywhere and true if you're in production. And at the moment, this is true because this machine is in production. Now let's take a specific example. You want to test something. One of your junior admins has a problem with um, passenger on a particular host and he wants to try turning it off. Well, he can do that. He can edit the host. He can come to the parameters and you can see immediately we're seeing this um, inheritance uh, page was saying that foreman um, for passen the foreman class with the passenger variable currently has a value of true and we can override it and we can change that to false there we go and I can submit that and if we look at the YAML it now says false so my junior admin does not need access to the puppet classes page in order to change the values for a specific host uh, and this is also true for host groups as well. You can override parameters in the same way. 
Um, that's nice, and if we go back and we look at our class, you'll see that what's actually happened is the Foreman code underneath has added a new matcher saying that for that specific host we should have a value of false. So that's all it's doing, it's playing on these matches and, and for this reason you should try and keep FQDN and host group fairly high up the matcher list because otherwise you'll probably get unintended consequences where you've got environment at the top of your matches so they go and change the host and nothing happens. There's one more thing worth knowing people make mistakes and generally speaking um, people make more mistakes when they're not when they think they can't do any damage um, if you know you're editing a very dangerous and admin level page you take great care in what you're doing but if all you're doing is overriding a parameter you might make a mistake and you might come in here and you might type something like this so I've typoed the word false this is now no longer going to work we're going to pass that in and we're going to get a validation failure. So that's good to know. That works for booleans. What about strings? Um, it's very easy to type of a string. Can we put some validation on that to make sure that my junior admin doesn't get it wrong? Well, the answer is yes. So let's, for the sake of argument, instead of being a boolean, let's make this a string. You'll see we have this validator section here. What we can do is we can say that a validator is required. And we've got some choices. We can make it a regex or we can make it a list. List is easier in this case, uh, and the list is comma separated with no spaces, so we can put in true comma false, and if I now save that, and I come back here, let's just start, so you can see this has become a string, that's not a big deal as far as Puppet's concerned, but just to show you it does take effect. Um, if I now edit it and try and make the same typo, should come back and tell me the same thing. There we are. False f is not one of true or false. So immediately we're getting uh, useful feedback in preventing people from making mistakes. Now it's not always sensible to put a validator in if you're putting an arbitrary string in like a password. It's not much you can do. Um, but again, if you're trying to uh, validate host names, you can put in you know a to z star or something like that as a regex. Um, or if you're doing ports, you can do you know 80 comma 443 for your Apache list. Um, this is just useful ways to prevent people from making silly mistakes. So that's um, parameterized classes in a nutshell. Um, there's plenty you can do with it. Um, one thing I should note is that for some of the data types, validators don't really exist. For example, you might want to use integer for your ports, but then you can't validate it. You have to use strings. Um, but in general, it's quite useful. Um, and that's about all there is to it. So um, I'll see you guys next time and have fun.